Chances are a lot of you listening to this have watched ABC's hit TV show and reality show, Shark Tank. One of the most underrated characters on the show is Lori Griner, and what she has to bring to the table is truly amazing. I mean, this lady is chock full of information, super duper smart, and honestly overall, just a big team player. We're actually going to be going over some of the secrets to her success, some of the tips she actually recommends for a lot of young entrepreneurs like yourself, and how to get started in the business world off to a fast pace. What's going on guys, JT here with The Business Hub, coming to you with another video. Make sure before the video loads up to leave a huge thumbs up on it, subscribe, and also turn our post bell notifications on. That way, you could be entered in this month's subscriber giveaway, where we shout out one lucky subscriber who does the following, subscribes to the channel, turns our post notifications on, and lets us know in the comment section down below that they subscribe. Now guys, let's get into the 10 secrets you did not know about Lori Griner. Our first tip slash secret is ask the important questions. When you're starting out, it's important to know the details of your product. Is it for a mass audience or only for a select few? Can it be made for a reasonable price? Is your idea something people truly need and want? Is it unique? These are all questions that will help you get a sense of your customers, your cost, and your sales pitch. For example, say you're selling basketballs. Who do you want it to appeal to? Chances are you're going to get a bigger male audience because males play more basketball than females. However, you don't want to just limit to that. Make sure you exclusively make your product for people who enjoy playing basketball, enjoy watching it on the casual player, or someone who takes it serious, someone who likes playing it competitively, you know, in a league or something. That way, you can maximize your sales. Then once you get your customer audience, you can worry on the cost. How much does your basketball cost? And then finally, once you get all those details situated out, you can end up worrying about who you're going to do the pitch to, how you're going to have your sales pitch work out. Next, we have do your market research yourself. How can you answer all those questions above? Get out there and pound the pavement. Look beyond your friends and family. Their initiate desire and to support you and give you positive feedback might not be an indicative of the larger consensus. Go to different neighborhoods and get opinions from all types of demographics. It's very important. If you live in an area like I do, a big mixing pot, you want to get pretty much opinions from people of your race, people of the opposite race, females, you know, males, that kind of stuff. When Griner actually did market research on her earring organizer, she went to all different neighborhoods and showed a prototype to people on the street. Then she asked them to fill out a simple basic questionnaire. Would you buy this? How much would you pay for it? Do you like it? And from those responses, she actually knew she had something big. Now, you don't have to go out and do what Lori did in the street and everything, but it's easy because you have social media nowadays. All this technology is great. It really builds and can help you expand and build a broader audience for your product. So go ahead, make them fill out a questionnaire, do the market research for yourself, because once you get to that level where you can pay people to do the market research for you, then you know you've made it. Upcoming, we have don't overspend. This is a huge tip. Griner says overspending in the early stages is a common problem. People hire more staff than they need, for example, and pay rent on a fancy office when they could easily just work out of their homes. Too much inventory is another common problem. You can't take up a warehouse space when you have no sales, she said. In the beginning, you need to stay lean and mean. Do what you can yourself, hire prudently, or outsource smaller jobs. Very, very important step because you don't want to overspend. The whole point of making a business or starting a company is that you want to make money. You don't want to spend too much money and overall the sales you get, the spending costs outweigh the sales. It's not how it works. You want your net profit to be in the positives and to be in the thousands if you can get it there. Once you have stabilized that, found a formula that works for your company, the bigger it grows, the ever changing that the formula is going to be. So say you're making $100,000 a year and you spend $70,000 for your company, you're only netting about 30, 25. And if you're doing it yourself, you don't have to pay anyone. However, if you have employees, you gotta pay them. So you end up walking away with like 10, 15,000. However, once you get into the hundreds of thousands or close to the millions, that's when you can start paying a little bit more for marketing, for inventory, for warehouse space. For all that stuff, it's gonna take up a lot of money. However, once you have that money to do that, you know you're in good hands. The next one's very, very easy, but very, very relatable. Be likable. When people are considering investing in your idea, they're also considering investing in working with you. If you're open to constructive criticism and able to communicate and are honest and ethical, it makes a huge difference. Guys, like you've always heard before, people always say this, your mother probably has told you this, honesty goes a far way, and it's true. 
If you're open and honest with people, they're going to be open and honest with you. Therefore, they have no reason to lie to you. And if they do, well then, those are just the bad seeds out of the package. Also, be open to constructive criticism, like she says. If someone criticizes you harshly on your item, don't take it as a personal offense. Take it as something you could build off and learn from. For example, I actually had, you know, a product that I actually put out a couple years ago. It was something for the car so your phone wouldn't fall in between that, you know, that little dark space hole right there. The problem with mine was it wouldn't really stay up. It relied on a sticker. And if they had leather seats, it worked. However, if they didn't have leather seats, you know, they had suede, that kind of stuff in the car, wouldn't stick. Not a lot of people criticized me for it. They said, why don't you just make it plastic so it works for every surface. However, I took it personally. Didn't work out. And a couple years later, you know, I'm doing well. I'm doing really well, actually, because I actually took that idea. I took their criticism and I passed it on to a friend who actually operates the company now and I get a percentage of it. So always make sure to be likable. There's always going to be people who are hating. They're called haters. Make the haters close to you. Make sure you understand why they hate and what you can do better to improve yourself. Lastly, we have pay attention to your packaging, a very big step in the process, Lori Griner says. Packaging is super important to Griner, who often spends months working on it with the entrepreneur she mentors. It is very important that it catches the eye, it tells. She says it tells you exactly what it is instantaneously, and it makes you want to pick it up, she said. In addition to eye-catching color, remember that the image on the package is especially important because people see faster than they read. Therefore, Griner says, the image of the product has to be appealing and actually grab your guys' attention. Font style is also something to think about when considering how to get your message across to consumers. If you use fancy font, very, very bright color in the packaging, and a catchy logo, something people like, they're going to honestly love it before they even get to the main product that's inside the package. Everything is awesome. And you know how people say don't judge a book by its cover? Well, in this case, you want them to. You want them to judge that package, which is the book, by its cover. You want them to judge the cover. Overall, the cover is the book. The package is the book. Or excuse me, the package is the book. So that is pretty much all you need for packaging. Make sure you get it right and you understand and you'll be on your way to success. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really do. This is JT here with The Central signing off. And as always, see you guys later.